Hey there, my name is Jack, and I'm going to teach you to code in processing in just a few minutes. So I've got the processing environment open, and uh, this is my favorite thing about processing, really. So there's a blank sketch, and if I hit the play button here, the run button, you can also hit Command or Control R if you're on Windows. This is our program. It's already compiled. It's already running. And there it is. It's, uh, it's not fancy, but for typing zero lines of code, I think that's pretty cool. So you can close that, and it'll stop running it, or you could also hit the stop button here on the main window. So let's let's do better. I think that window's a little too small, so I'm going to teach you your first function that you can call. Uh, a function is a group of code um, that you can call, which means to sort of run it or to activate it by invoking its name. So this function is called size, and you always put two parentheses um, at the end of it to invoke it and any statement that we make in this language we have a semicolon at the end that's right there so size takes two arguments meaning two bits of information it needs in order to run and do its business so for size it wants to know how big the window should be how what the size of the window is so i'm going to type in 800 comma 600 and uh, i put a space here that's totally optional um Processing and a lot of other languages don't care about spaces so long as they don't change the meaning of what you're typing So I can put a lot of spaces here and that'll run or I could put a space before the semicolon That's fine space between the comma now if I put a space in the middle of the word size It's changed its meaning right? It's now the word si and the word ze and that doesn't that doesn't work There's no function called ze and the word si doesn't mean anything on its own So we'd have a problem in fact if I run this right now Syntax error. Maybe you're missing a semicolon. It's real confused. So, just want to get that out of the way. Um, now, if we go ahead and run this correctly, boom! Now we have a window that is 800 pixels by 600 pixels tall. Um, and whenever we're talking about width and height in processing, it's always width first and then height. Or x axis, left to right, followed by y-axis up and down. So any anything that takes a position is going to take two numbers if they're in that order. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's put something on the screen. I mean, processing is a visual language, right? So our next function we can call is rect, R-E-C-T. That's rectangle. And rect, just again, is a function. So we need to make sure we put our two parentheses in a semicolon. That's the end of the statement. Um, it takes four uh, arguments, or four pieces of information it needs to run. Um, and that is the position of the top left corner and the width and height of the rectangle from that corner. So that sounds a little strange, uh, just bear with me here. So I'm going to say 100 by 100, so that's 100 left and 100 down, because uh, in processing we measure 0, 0 is the top left corner. Um, and then the next two numbers are the width and height of the rectangle that we're going to draw on the screen. So I'm going to say Let's make it 200 wide and 100 tall. So if I run that, there is our rectangle. And if you kind of eyeball it here, if you imagine where my mouse is in the top left of the screen, and if we just we just follow along with the arguments here, we move 100 out to the right, because that's our x-axis, and we move 100 down, and so those first two numbers, that's the corner, that's the top left corner of our rectangle. And then the next two numbers here are the width out and the height down of that rectangle. So we go 200 from there and 100 down, and that's how the a rectangle is. So that's pretty cool. And in fact, if we just copy paste this line and we draw it again, and we change these numbers, I'm gonna do 150 by 150, but I haven't changed the width and the height. Think about what we're gonna get. I've just changed the, the position of the top left corner, but I haven't changed the width and the height of the second rectangle. Right, I'm gonna run it and there we go we have two rectangles on top of each other now uh, this might not be obvious if you've never programmed before um, but processing and any other language you deal with really is gonna follow the instructions that you've given it in the order you're gonna give it so our program sets the size of the window then it draws one rectangle and then it draws another and because we've just written this naked where there's no other code around it wrapping it in any way that's it our program's done. It doesn't close, but nothing else is ever going to happen. It's It's been rendered and we're done. Um, but the cool part about processing is it does animations. It can run as fast as you want it to, basically, frames per second. Um, so let's refactor. So 
Um, maybe I should point out before anything else. Um, again, white space doesn't matter here. So if we get rid of all of our stuff, and I, we can retype that pretty quick, we need to give processing two structures that it can work with. Um, Got to give it two functions actually that it can call. So just like we were doing size and rect, and these were functions that have already have been defined for us. You know, the people that built processing made it so that size does something, and they also made it so rect does something when we call it. Those those definitions are hidden somewhere. We can define our own functions and then call them. So um, the keyword for creating a function, at least in this beginning, is going to be void, V-O-I-D. So the word void, followed by the name of whatever you want the function to be called. In this case, we're going to call it setup, with parentheses, and then a new structure, these curly braces. So you say this is the, the signature of the function. This is the name of the function we're saying. We have a void function called setup, and you know, just have to bear with me and pretend you know what void means. We're making a function called setup. Uh, so far it doesn't take any arguments. This is where we would put if it needed to accept information in just kind of like when we call it and we put information in there. And then between these two uh, parentheses here, this is the block. This is what gets executed when we call setup. So this is the handle and this is the body. So we can type as many instructions, you know, and if they were real code, you can type as many instructions as you wanted it in here. And then whenever later in the program you called setup on its own, it would run all of this code again. And so that's that's the first kind of abstraction you're gonna see in processing um, and in programming in general, that you can write it once and call it as many times as you want. Uh, you can even have some functions call other functions. So it becomes, it's just, you know, the fundamental way to structure your code. Um, for us, we're lucky because processing already knows what setup should do. Even though we're gonna tell it what actually get, happens when it calls setup, setup has a special meaning that when we start our app here, processing calls setup one time. It's the setup of the program, and it never calls it again. Um, likewise, there's another function we can define, void draw. And unlike setup, draw gets called every time it's time to render a frame. And by default, I think uh, processing runs at 60 frames a second. Uh, they might have changed that default, I can't remember. but um, So we're gonna set up some stuff one time, and then every frame, whatever we want to have happen, some animation, some changing colors, whatever, we're gonna do it in the draw. So we sometimes call this the draw loop because this happens over and over and over and over again. And um, thanks to processing, we don't have to set up how these get called or manage any of the windowing or manage the timing of the frames. Whatever we put to be run and draw will happen every time. So let's set up our window. Let's do our size function again, 800 by 600. We only need to call that one time. We just need to say, hey, make the window this big, and then we never need to call that again, so it's great to put that in setup. And in draw, we can do our rectangle again. I'm going to do the same position, 100 and 100, 200 wide, 100 tall. So if we run this, it's going to look the same, because we're drawing the rectangle in the same position every frame. So it's animating at 60 frames a second, but nothing in the scene is actually moving, so it doesn't look different. But here's where it gets cool. So there's a couple of variables that have already been defined. A variable is a container for data. Um, you know, a number, some letters and other characters, um, bigger kind of data called objects, which is a collection of smaller objects. Um, but like I said, processing already defined some of these variables for us. They already have names. So there's a variable called mouse x, and you'll see this uh, lowercase mouse, uppercase x, all one word, right? And you can see even in the editor, it's it's sort of a pinkish purple color. Um, and just like these other color coding, processing is letting us know, hey, I recognize that. I know what that variable is. That's something that's already built into me, you know? So that's a great way to, uh, you know, if you put a space or you spelled mouse wrong, you know, you'll see that it doesn't light up. So mouse X is the number of where our mouse is on the screen, our, our position, the X value of it. So another way to say that is how far from the left towards the right, our mouse is within the processing window. And this gets re-figured out every time we use it, every every frame. So the first frame, it's gonna check what mouse position X is, then it's gonna feed it in place, say it was 70. It, it's almost like it puts 70 here for us. And then 
it executes the whole function, which draws a rectangle at 70 by 100 width height. So if we put mouse X in here, I'm going to move my mouse off the side of the screen and look at that. So the rectangle is all the way on the left hand side of the screen. My mouse hasn't actually come onto the processing window yet. And so by default, the mouse position is at 0, 0, 0, X and 0, Y. But as soon as I start creeping my mouse on the screen, you see a kind of interesting effect here. We're drawing the square over and over and over again on the screen and we're never not drawing it, right? So every frame is trying to be right where my mouse is X, Y. Now it's still set at 100 down from the top 100 Y because I haven't changed that yet. And in fact, let's go do that right now. Because there's another variable, if you might have guessed, called mouse Y. So now, this guy sticks to wherever my mouse is every frame. But say we were making a game and not just a cool, you know, screensaver effect here. You'd probably only want one copy of the character on the screen at a time, right? You wouldn't want all these old copies. So what we have to do is paint over the background. Processing doesn't clear away the screen ever unless you tell it exactly to do that. So there's another function we can use called background, which paints over the entire canvas to sort of set a background layer. And if we put that in our draw loop here and we put it before the rectangle, every frame it's going to come in here, it's going to clear over the background, and then it's going to draw a rectangle. And it'll do that every frame. Um, so we'll always be overwriting the last visual, you know, what's there with the new uh, rectangle that we've just rendered. Now background does take uh, one argument, which is the the color of the background to draw. I'm going to put in zero right now, and that's a default way to say um, black. Uh, if we did 255, that's another way to say white. Um, if you're familiar with hex color codes, there's uh, usually three of them to be the red, green, and blue value, but we'll skip that for now. Um, we can just use this syntax. So now if I run it, black background, draw a rectangle, and do that over and over and over again. And now we have square that is following the mouse.